Hi, this is Shay Jackson with Hype Math. In today's fifth grade video, we will be reviewing the reading concept, making inferences and drawing conclusions. This is part three. Let's get started. Remember fifth graders, your attitude determines your direction. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so that you will be alerted when we upload new videos. The concepts reviewed and also the stories and questions are in our fifth grade reading review workbook and it is for purchase in our store. The link will be in the description box. Grab yours today. Also, we have our fifth grade math review workbook and it is also available to purchase in our store. That link will be in the description box as well. So let's review making inferences. Now, yes, we did go over these two um, reading concepts in part one and part two, but it's great to go over it again just so that we can have um, these concepts solidified in our mind. Making inferences. This is using information in the text or clues and what you know, which is your background knowledge, to make a reasonable guess about characters and events in the text that the author does not directly tell you. For example, if someone is smiling, we can infer that that person is happy. Drawing conclusions. This is making a decision or judgment on a situation based on information from two or more things in a text. Another way to say it is clues. An example is the little girl is walking down the aisle wearing a fancy dress and holding flowers. The conclusion we can draw is that she is in a wedding. Let's talk about ways we can make an inference or draw a conclusion. Number one, we can think about our own experiences. Two, think about what you already know. Three, use clues you see or read from the text. Four, think about how the character feels. Five, think about what the character says. Six, Think about the character's actions. And seven, think about how the character handles situations. So let's dive in and look at how we can make inferences and draw conclusions. This excerpt is from Lewis and, Lewis and Clark and Me, A Dog's Tale by Lori Myers. Lewis and I had stopped by the river's edge to survey the flow of water when the calf wandered up. I do not know what it was thinking. Probably nothing. I've never considered buffaloes to be smart. Anyway, this buffalo calf took one look at me and went straight to Lewis. When Lewis walked on, the calf followed right on his heels. That calf was acting as though Lewis were its mother. Now, when Lewis and I walked, we sometimes split up. I'd hear an animal or smell something that I needed to check out, and I would head in a different direction. Not this time. I stayed with Lewis and the calf, but I walked a few yards behind. The calf kept looking back at me. Maybe he was hoping I would disappear so that he could have Lewis all to himself or something ridiculous like that. Lewis stopped by the river again. The calf stayed by his side. I stared at the calf. Why was he attaching himself to Lewis? Did he think he was going to stay with Lewis permanently? I needed to scare off the calf. That would put an end to this. This nonsense. 
I was sure Lewis didn't want him around any more than I did. I decided a growl would be enough. After all, this was just a calf. Of course, buffaloes are stubborn. If I needed to, I could throw my paws into the air and play the part of bear dog. That would work. I took a deep breath in and started a low growl. It was not my most vicious growl, just a low constant rumble to let that calf know he wasn't welcome. The calf looked over his shoulder at me, then took a step closer to Lewis. That didn't make any sense. Lewis and I were a team. Moving close to Lewis was moving close to me. Next, Lewis did something that surprised me. He reached out his hand and placed it on the calf's head, the same way he puts his hand on my head sometimes. That was the last thing I expected. Could it be that Lewis wanted the calf to stay with us? What was Lewis thinking? Where's your mother, Lewis said. At that moment, everything became clear, like the streams in the mountains. I looked at the calf's eyes. He didn't have those piercing black eyes that the adult buffalo that the adult buffaloes have when they're mad. His eyes were soft, tinted with fear. The calf was afraid of me. How could I have missed that? The calf reeked of fear. He was twice my size, but he was frightened nonetheless. I backed away. Lewis scratched the calf's ears. I was touched by the gentle way Lewis handled him. Lewis turned and started back toward the boat, the buffalo calf close at his heels. I followed, keeping my distance so as not to scare the calf. When we arrived at the boat, Lewis and I got in. The calf watched us from the shore as we pulled away. Suddenly, it all seemed very funny to me. Imagine a buffalo calf thinking it could be a part of our lives. How in the world would he get in and out of the boat? I thought about the ridiculous sight. It's times like that when I wish I could laugh. I wagged my tail. Now, when I think back on the whole situation, I guess I was jealous. I see that in young dogs. A new puppy comes along all playful and cunning and everyone pats it and plays with it. Then the big dogs, then the big dogs jump all over themselves, selves trying to get noticed. Well, I didn't jump all over myself, but I suppose that if I had gone much fur further, I might have. My feelings for Lewis, my feelings for Lewis have always run strong. And that is an excerpt from A Dog's Tale. Now let's look at some questions. Read this excerpt from par paragraph 12. I followed keeping my distance so as not to scare the calf. What can the reader conclude about the dog from this sentence? A. He is no longer interested in getting on the boat with Lewis. B. He is not certain of where Lewis wants to explore next. C. He has a new understanding of the calf's feelings. D. He is no longer frightened by the calf. So let's look back and again, this is a way when you are drawing conclusions and making inferences, it's good to go back um, to, we said paragraph 12, this is where the excerpt is. And sometimes you need to look at the paragraphs that are ahead of that paragraph or the ones that are after to help you get an understanding of the story so that you can answer the question, okay? So paragraph nine, 
it says at that moment everything became clear like the streams in the mountains i looked at the cow's eyes he didn't have those piercing black eyes that the adult buffaloes have when they're mad his eyes were soft tinted with fear then the calf was the calf not then the calf was afraid of me how could i have missed that the calf reeked of fear he was twice my size but he was frightened nonetheless i backed away 11 lewis scratched the calf's ears i was touched by the gentle way lewis handled him 12 lewis turned and started back toward the boat the buffalo close at his heels i followed keeping my distance so as not to scare the calf when we arrived at the boat lewis and i lewis and i got in the calf watched us from the shore as we pulled away okay so let's look back at the excerpt i followed keeping my distance so as not to scare the calf now we read the paragraph 9 to 12 and it kind of gives us background information remember we said background knowledge or information surrounding what we're asking for to help us in drawing a conclusion so again answer choice a is he is no longer interested in getting on the boat with lewis and you have to think is that what the is that what the selection said b he is not certain of where lewis wants to explore next c he has a new understanding of the calf's feelings and d he is no longer frightened by the calf so think about the things that we read in the uh, in the selection okay and answer what do you think i follow keeping my distance so as not to scare the calf what conclusion can you draw if you said c he has new understanding of the calf's feelings you are absolutely correct okay and we know that the let's talk about the other answer choices so to kind of help us know that no that's not those are not the correct answers for a nowhere in that part of the selection or the paragraphs did we talk about the lewis and the dog getting on the boat it was after that okay also he is not certain where lewis wants to explore next that really has um nothing to do with why he was following behind okay he has a new understanding of the calf's feelings and it, something that can kind of be a clue for you is so as not to scare the calf and scare is a feeling and so that okay that could help and d he is no longer frightened by the calf so it's not that the dog was frightened it says so it's not to scare the calf and scaring means feelings and those are the ways that you have to just take a moment to think about what the selection is saying what's around the information you're trying to answer to come up with the best answer you always want to find the best answer okay number two who do the dogs questions in paragraphs four seven what do the dogs not who what do the dogs questions in paragraphs four seven and ten suggest f the dog is trying to make sense of the situation g the dog is not familiar with the surroundings h the dog is unsure about his feelings for lewis j the dog is not paying attention to lewis so in order for us to make a educated guess on the answer we need to look at paragraphs four seven and ten so that we can find our answer okay so let's look and we are going to just read through paragraph four says lewis stopped by the river again the calf stayed by his side i stared at the calf 
why was he attaching himself to Lewis? Did he think he was going to stay with Lewis permanently? Paragraph seven. Next, Lewis did something that surprised me. He reached out his hand and placed it on the calf's head, the same way he would put his hand on my head sometimes. That was the last thing I expected. Could it be that Lewis wanted the calf to stay with us? What was Lewis thinking? And 10, the calf was afraid of me. How could I have missed that? The calf reeked of fear. He was twice my size, but he was frightened nonetheless. I backed away. Okay, so based on those three paragraphs, we are trying to find out what do the dog's questions in paragraphs four, seven, and 10 suggest? Do they suggest F, the dog is trying to make sense of the situation? G, the dog is not familiar with the surroundings? H, the dog is unsure about his feelings for Lewis? Or J, the dog is not paying attention to Lewis? What would you say is the correct answer? If you said F, the dog is trying to make sense of the situation, you are absolutely correct. So let's look at the let's look at paragraphs four, seven, and ten. And in it, it's just talking as the Lewis is walking and the reaction that the calf is having and the reaction that Lewis is having to the calf. It's like the dog is processing what is going on. It doesn't say anything about the dog not knowing the surroundings or that what what were the other answer choices? Let me see that the dog was not unsure about his feelings for Lewis or that he wasn't paying attention because he was paying a lot of attention to Lewis and the calf, okay? So F, the dog is trying to make sense of the situation is the answer. And that is the end of the fifth grade reading review, drawing conclusions and making inferences. Remember, you can purchase our fifth grade math and fifth grade reading review workbooks on our website. The, the links will be in the description box. This is Shay Jackson with Hype Math. I will talk to you soon.